Our guest in this segment is Will Lawrenson. He is the Berkeley County Fiduciary Supervisor. Will, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I want to give you a chance to comment on the Pitt WVU game because I think that should only, as a Pitt fan, only count as half of a win because the Pitt quarterback. I mean, I could have gotten a nine-year-old out of the stands to play better than that guy. What was that? I, I will say the he seemed to be a little confused as to which team he was passing to. <laughs> no, he seemed pretty time. clear as to which team he was passing to, Will. <laughs> those those interceptions were right in the numbers, per, thrown perfect spiral they right were. to us. Uh, but, no, it was a great atmosphere. It was wonderful uh, to get out there. Saw a lot of people from the Eastern Panhandle. It was it was quite the scene. Yeah, I had uh, uh, people were offering me tickets if I, if I wanted to go uh, to the game. But – uh, I coach high school football, and Saturday is a big work day for me, so there was no way I was going to be able to uh, get to that game. But also, knowing Pitt's quarterback from the first two games, uh, Phil Yurkovic, uh, there was no way that I wanted to watch that performance. Yeah, I don't think Yurkovic is going to be uh, something that, you know, everybody speaks the name of Yurkovic. I don't think that's – I mean, you know, sometimes to people get, uh, get get drafted usually by the Jets, and you, you just th <laughs> you hear the guy's name, and it's like Paul Yeniskevitz, and you're like, that guy's never going to be a, a star guy. Anyway. Yes, the Yeniskevitz football family has contributed much to the NFL. Now, will this turn around Neil Brown's future or is just going to delay the No, level? he's he's got a bad – football team and Pitt has a bad football team combined and they may not win eight games between the two of them. That's probably true. They're both neither team is pretty is very good. Uh well let's talk about your job with Berkeley County. Bill uh, suggested that we bring you in here and, and uh talk about a few things. Bill maybe you could set up the premise behind that. Yeah this. uh when uh Danny Staggers on the other day he started talking about the wills and the probate and the like and it brought to mind a lot of that I do not know the county's role or how a probate is actually executed, mm -hmm. the purpose of a probate, all of that will that is that you deal with on a daily day on a day daily basis is uh, is kind of a foreign language to many of us. Sure, um, yeah. So uh, Berkeley County is actually kind of an outlier uh, with regards to our probate system, only from the standpoint that typically, at least with regards to the rest of the Eastern Panhandle, Morgan and Jefferson County, they're all handled through. Uh, the county clerk's office. Uh, the fiduciary supervisor uh, was created back in 1982 by the legislature as an optional procedure uh, in which basically the clerk's office says, yeah, this is a lot. Uh, we need a specific staff for probate, probate specifically. And so uh, the county commission then forms a staff uh, around that. And Berkeley County uh, started that in 1987. I'm the third uh, fiduciary supervisor this county has had. Um, and so basically what we do is we are uh, a specified staff that handles uh, probate uh, and basically we're the gatekeepers. We make sure that the laws are adhered to. We make sure that uh, wills are uh, legally valid, at least on their face. Um, and we make sure all documents pursuant to the probate that you're, you're filing, whether you be a lawyer or uh, anybody else, um, uh, adheres to the laws and at least makes sense on a cursory note. Will, does, is every will probated? No. Uh, probate is actually an optional procedure, and probate is handled specifically in two instances, mostly. Um, one, uh, a decedent has assets in their own name, titled in their own name, whether it's a house, uh, it's a car, it's bank accounts, it's whatever. Um, and or a check is made payable to their state. If that happens, the only way you're going to get any kind of legal uh, uh, title to that is through probate. Now, if the decedent doesn't have any of those things, we, we talked about that, John, um, it, it, we, it, that, that's what's called a non-probate transfer. You wouldn't have to come into my office. Now, the second reason why probate is opened is to gain legal authority over an estate. Often our business uh, outlives us. Uh, if there's a lawsuit pending or going uh, through with your name on it, uh, that lawsuit needs to come to uh, fruition and you, uh, if you didn't survive it, uh, you still, your, your family or your estate handles that business for you. But the majority of the people that die have something. So the majority of the people have probate. Mm -hmm. Now, are the, are the bulk of the probates handled directly by your office? But now there's some that go before the county commission. That's correct. And what and why do they find their way to the county commission? And uh, the second question is, after the county commission makes a decision, uh, 
is there a subsequent recourse? Yes. Yeah, so that's uh, my first question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, well, so the county commission uh, they technically close all probates. So my office handles the first two st- probate is in three separate steps. Settlement is the final step. Uh, my office handles uh, the first two steps, and the uh, county commission, uh, with recommendation from my office, closes probate. That's how they they get into it. Now, the county commission also gets into uh, contested estates, estates where um, you know one party is either not happy uh, with how probate is handled through the personal representative, or a creditor thinks they're entitled to uh, compensation. And the personal representative respectfully says, I don't think so. Um, and, and that we provide a hearing like atmosphere for those concerns. Um, we also have what's called fiduciary commissioners. Commissioners are lawyers uh, appointed by the county to basically arbitrate uh, the, these, these uh, you know, dissensions within the estates. So, you know, there's a lot of law, uh, <laughs> judicial-like things uh, that the county commission kind of oversees, but we are the first stop. Now, your second question being, you know, what recourse after the county commission has its say? Well, the code says that uh, the appellate jurisdiction for anything the county does with regards to probate is the circuit court. So it goes right across the street uh, uh, over there at the judicial center, and uh, it's it's forwarded that way. One might ask why you know why the first step? Why go through the county in any event? And the reason is it's cheaper. It's you know uh, circuit court and lawsuits. I don't have to tell anybody is often marred in tons of costs and delays. Now we have delays, not necessarily all the costs though. So <clears throat> if someone dies, when someone dies. If they have three children, we'll just keep it as a, no spouse involved. So the, the, the scion of the family dies, you got three children. And the will says that I leave all of my stuff to, in equal shares to my children. Is that the stuff of probate where, where child two says, no, 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 wait, I, I deserve more than that? Or is, or is the will take care of that? Isn't that the final statement of the decedent. So the will has jurisdiction only over probate assets, assets solely titled to the decedent. So if uh, children are the three residual beneficiaries through the will, as you say, um, if the house is titled like uh, transfer on death or payable uh, on death to one of the children, well, the other two kids don't have any say in that because the deed tells us where that goes upon death. So, uh, for instance, I mean, the will also can't give away property the decedent doesn't have. If I don't have the Eiffel Tower, I can't split that with, uh, with my children. And if I also, similarly, less ridiculously, if I say $100,000 goes to child A, well, if I don't own $100,000 at all, I can't give you that $100,000. So, it, it, it is, um, <clears throat> so, wills have uh, authority over those probate assets. Similarly, you know, uh, a lot of people through their wills, when they, they don't go to a, a professional, they're just doing it on their own, um, will try to designate portions of a life insurance policy payable upon somebody else. Well, the policy dictates who it goes to. Uh, so the will has no authority there. However, if the, uh, you know, decedent had assets of their own, on their own, um, you know, owned solely to the decedent, that is what the will de- deals with. Okay, let's pick up on John's point or use an example of th- uh, three children. And a will does not exist. The, uh, and it goes to probate. Are there, is there a formula which is, mm-hmm. that you have to follow? Yeah, so that's called <coughs> int- intestacy. Uh, intestacy uh, is the descent and distribution of assets uh, in scenarios where there aren't, where there is no will, or the will is not legally valid, or if a will doesn't designate, designate beneficiaries. Sometimes they don't do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, if in your scenario, uh, decedent passes away with no spouse and has three biological or adopt legally adopted children. Uh, the law says that each child gets a third. Um, there's also a thing called uh, perturbies distribution, where let's say one of your children predeceases you, but they had children. 
uh, in West Virginia that the the grandchildren step in place of their predeceasing uh, parent and take what their parent would have gotten in equal shares by definition. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. The gift does not lapse. That's a, that's the legal term. Are you I know a, Rob loves it when I get in there. Anyway, are you uh, well, are you a state employee or a county employee? I'm a county employee. I serve at the pleasure of the county commission. Are you governed mostly by state law or federal law? All state. Well, the federal law doesn't actually uh, really come into it uh, at all. Each state has their own kind of, uh, like, for instance, Maryland has a register of wills. Virginia deals with probate through their judicial system. You have to go to court. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's different, but the rules are pretty, pretty similar. I mean, we actually had an issue on Friday where uh, dealing with a, uh, a person who made a will, subsequently got uh, married, and the issue is, is still kind of ongoing. But, you know, I looked at the code section because was, there was an open question of where did they get married? They get married in Virginia? They get married in West Virginia? <clears throat> and I looked at the code section. It's almost identical. So, I mean, we, we, <laughs> the legislature doesn't just recreate the wheel. Uh, we, we use what we have on hand. We, uh, the legislature, uses what they have on hand. And so there's a lot of commonality in laws. So, so if, if there were legal objections to what was going on, would it likely, if it were to go up the ladder, would it likely die at the state Supreme Court level as opposed to ever getting to a federal court? Very much so, yeah. Um, it, it would it would off, well, actually, the, this is where the new interim uh, appellate court comes in uh, because they handle probate uh, matters first before it gets to the Supreme Court if it appeals from the, uh, well, First, you appeal from the county commission because uh, you didn't like what they did. Uh, then you appeal the circuit court. That would go to then to the intermediate court, and then it goes to the Supreme Court. And has the state legislature passed any laws recently or affected any laws that have changed what you do? Massively. Uh, since really, well, probate dates back to ye old England. I mean, property law in, in our country goes way, way back. Um, but West Virginia probate remained relatively unchanged for a period of about 50, 60 years. Um, and, and if you wanted to inherit property uh, solely owned by the decedent, this classic probate was the only way to do that. Well, in 2019, uh, the legislature changed that to if you are not a resident of West Virginia or Berkeley County, but you own West Virginia real estate, there's a shortened period. It's called ancillary administration. Uh, it's a shortened period, so you don't have to go through probate twice. You did a pro If I lived in Colorado, you did probate in Colorado, you shouldn't have to do that twice. I mean, that's base the basic premise there. Then in 2021, we introduced something that a lot of other states did, uh, which is called uh, small estate, which is a majority of what our business is now, uh, which says that if you have $50,000 in tangible assets, meaning vehicles, bank accounts, those kinds of things, and $100,000 or less in uh, in real property, and if you designate those things, then you only have to go through one step of probate. You do not have to go through the whole rigmarole of getting the estate published, dealing with creditors. I mean, you still have to deal with creditors, but you do it privately. You do it uh, through private agreement. So that's a huge change. No bonding is, is issued, uh, typically my office, if there's no will, uh, as Bill mentioned, and there are three children, and one child wants to represent the estate. Well, I have to secure those assets. I have to secure the bank accounts and those kinds of things, because once you qualify, you're going to be able to liquidate those things and run off. So what I do is I issue a bond for the estimated value of those things, and if it turns out that there's actually a lot more than I have the uh, authority to, hey, increase your bond, otherwise I'm going to remove you. Um, so, but in small estates, you're not bonded at all. You, you uh, designate the assets, everybody gets a copy of everything so they know what they should get, and, uh, and, and that change. So that's a huge, huge change. Um, and more recently, for settlements, uh, the law changed so that uh, the notice requirements for a settlement, for uh, classic probate, there are two ways you can settle. You can do a, a final accounting, it designated everything uh, of who's getting what, and that is only, uh, only needs to be signed by the personal representative. There's another way of settling where basically everybody says, look, we just want to get this over with. Everybody signs, we're, we all know what we're going to get, you're good to go. 
for those, it's called an affidavit and waiver, for those, uh, you, no uh, additional requirements of notice is required. So th the theory there is everybody signed off, we all know what we're supposed to get. You don't need to put that in the newspaper uh, and, and, and make a, a big public showing of it. We all know what we're supposed to get. And those are just some of the crazy changes in the last five years, that, and they've all come very recently. Are you hoping that a few other things are changed that would make things more efficient? Yes, uh, I do. I think, I mean, it, this isn't very nice to newspapers, and uh, newspapers are very uh, near and dear to my heart, as my mom uh, knows. Uh, Maria Lawrence, and just for the audience. Um, no, uh, 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 I, I think that the notice requirements are a little outdated. Uh, we, Agreed. We notice uh, through the, the journal if the whole point is eyeballs. I mean, it, we, 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 there are other options there, including Facebook, including if you don't have a computer, you can post them just literally in our building. I think that's going to get you more eyeballs than than sadly um, public uh, posting them in the newspaper. That being said, I mean there you know there are a lot of a lot of little bits and bops. I'm happy uh, that the law does not give uh, a lot of judicial discretion. I'm not the pro uh, probate police. Uh, I have no, so I, I have some like subpoena power. If I, you know, if I'm if I'm having a hearing and you're like I don't really want to go, I can force you to go if you're a West Virginia resident. Now, I can't, you know, uh, smack you around a little bit. I, I don't have police power or anything like that. So Not, uh, not that Will's advocating the police smack you <laughs> no, around to get you to appear in court. Well, sometimes. No, um, no, no, no. Uh, but, but it, you know, the enforcement mechanism is uh, the carrot at the end of this is closing probate. And the stick I wield is, you know, I can stop that from happening. And, and I can stop assets from freely flowing because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. Well, let me carry us, carry us back to first principles. Uh, someone dies, a member of the family. Uh, what does the family do? Uh, do they come to your office? Do they sit down with your folks? Is this done over telephone? What is the time frame that they have to do? They're, they're facing a lot of emotional problems. How does, the, how does your office factor in at, at what time? Sure. So I shouldn't have to say this, but obviously you must wait until a decedent passes away. Uh, I've gotten some phone calls of, well, you know, Jimmy's not looking good, so I thought I'd I'm not a, dead yet. Well, okay, well, <laughs> why don't we wait a little bit? Um, but, yeah, so once a decedent has passed away, uh, my office, uh, you can stop by my office, you can give us a call, and just see kind of where you are. You can also go to our website. It's uh, Berkeley. Uh, it's, it's on the Berkeley County uh, website under governmental services and you click on fiduciary we have checklists of you know of your various uh, we have checklists for with a will states with a will we have checklists without a will and so uh, typically uh, when when somebody passes away your first stop your first call is hey to my office hey what do we need what do we need to do here uh, here's a gen and we'll ask you some sometimes you know asking what a decedent owned in their own name, that can get a little tricky. And, and obviously, it's an emotional time for people. And there's no time, you know, requirement within the first 30 days, uh, legally speaking, either the named person in a will, or uh, the surviving spouse has first rights to open an estate. After those first 30 days, anybody can uh, creditors can open an estate. Um, so I mean, it's, it's, you know, timing, don't feel like you have to rush in, but we're certainly happy to help with information of what you can look forward to in the next, you know, uh, next several months. Now, as far as timing goes, Bill, um, you know, probate lasts as long as it needs to. We have estates that have opened and closed within three or four months. We've had estates, full probate estates, um, last 10, 15, 20 years. So, I mean, it, it really, it, it depends on the uh, the personal representative and the scenario. Because, I mean, obviously with lawsuits, you can't really hope to, you know, uh, resolve that within a, a one-year period. That's just not re very realistic. Let me, well, let me uh, see if I can follow up for clarification on my mind. Someone dies. Uh, you, uh, If you know they have a will, I, my first instinct would be go to my lawyer and to see what the will says. Mm -hmm. But the will cannot be executed until it's gone through probate. Is that correct? Well, 
Yes, executed is kind of, a, I mean, in real terms, executing a will is literally signing and dating it and witnessing it. So, well, by, that, that's done. I'm talking right. after someone's death. Once you, uh, recording it, yes, you bring it into my office. My office examines it for the big, you know, uh, telltale signs of what makes a legally valid will legal. Uh, and then we, we kind of take it from there. And the law does actually say uh, to bring that will in within the first 30 days. Okay. The big, uh, one of the big uh, hiccups that we find is that it must be the original. So if it's a copy, there's a process for you to go through, but it takes longer, it costs more. And uh, so if you have the original, uh, if you know where the original is, those are, those are big, big things. Uh, not knowing where they are is a big problem. So individuals should know where the will is and should be be prepared to bring it in within 30 days yes. after death. Yes. Okay. So bring it full circle. <clears throat> if the Franklin family were living today mm -hmm. and young Fr Will? Was will, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. And Will finds out that he's inherited his father's debts and properties he doesn't want. Can he no, say thank it's you? It's his own for? debts that his father is responsible for. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so Will ran up the debts? Yes, yes, oh, okay. and, and Ben was responsible for it. <laughs> okay, so this wasn't vindictive. No, 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 Okay, well. all right. No, uh, so with regards to debts, um, a person's debts are their own. So if I have children, I run up, I max out my credit cards, I have $25,000 in debt, that debt does not pass to my children automatically. Now... We can get into lawyerese and say, well, you know, my assets are taxed uh, upon that credit, right? So upon that debt, I should say. And so uh, my children aren't going to get the $25,000 I would have given them um, because they pass through creditors first. Oh, sorry. They pass through creditors first, and then it goes to, that's part of what this process does. Is it, it, incurred, it encourages creditors for people who are perhaps later in life or or what have you, they know on the back end that there is a way of collection. Without it, you know, I feel, I feel like credit um, lines and, and credit cards and things like that, things that our economy run on, uh, would not be as readily as available for our uh, elderly population. So, I can uh, say from personal experience when settling a parent's estate that most creditors will settle for a fraction of what is owed yes. if the children are willing to pay. Well, because think of it this way, the, the estate holds all the cards. I mean, uh, creditors want to get uh, at least some uh, apportionment of what they, what they need. And, you know, you know, you, the personal representative, know what's in the estate and what's not, what's uh, liquidated and what's not. And so for just less of a headache, I mean, if you have a, let's say there's an ambulance bill out there for $800 and somebody's offering you 200, well, what's it gonna cost for you to go and collect that in magistrate court? I right. mean, it's not even really that worth it. So you're willing to take that. It does, it requires some creativity. It requires some professional acumen at times. Now, again, if you're a small estate, uh, all of that happens behind closed doors. Um, in a classic probate, uh, somebody or a creditor will file something on public record forcing you to the table, uh, saying, look, you're not going to settle this estate without dealing with me first um, in one way or another. So, yeah, I mean, Rob's absolutely right. Uh, settlement. So, say that again so Bill hears that. Well, <laughs> I have my earmuffs on. I won't, say, I, I, won't, I won't add a qualifier. Rob is correct uh, in, the, uh, in the sense that – uh, you are, it, it's a lot of deal making. It's a lot of deal making. And it's a, it's certainly not something I can just give you the answer to. Um, and I think that's also an important thing to understand is that my office, while we absolutely can, uh, give practical advice and it's a fine line to walk, we cannot give you legal advice. We cannot give you estate planning advice. So for those kinds of services, you really should seek an attorney or a trust officer or something like that. Bill, I want you to recall the exact quote was, Absolutely right. He, <laughs> yeah. he didn't say he's kind of right. He's sort of right. Yeah. I, th I believe Will's exact quote. Rob is absolutely yeah. right. What most folks cannot see, we have a tally board on the side, <laughs> and Rob finally has one mark on the correct side. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. It only, it only took 14 years, but I got there. <laughs> you got there. <laughs> we will. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Very Appreciate much. you visiting with us. This